What's up, divas and Devo? So it's your girl April, and I'm back. This is Real Talk Wednesday. So, you guys, by the time you see this, I will definitely be home. Um, I do go home tomorrow night, which is Tuesday. I will be home tomorrow um, in the evening. So I am recording this video today, Monday. No, I did not just get up, but I am relaxed um, and just chilling. Um, my last day here, so I'm sad about that. But I did have like a really good time. Um, I did with my family and stuff. So, you know, I'm excited to go home, but I'm also sad to leave. You ever get those moments where you want to go home because you miss everybody at home, but you don't want to leave anybody where you're already currently at because you're having such an amazing time and you know you're going to miss them. So that's how I feel right now. Mm -hmm. I definitely feel like that. But other than that, we had a great time. Me and my husband went to the movies. I think it was Saturday we went to the movies. Yeah, we went to the movies on Saturday to see The Equalizer 2 with Denzel Washington. If you've never seen the first one, you definitely have to check it out. It's a really good action movie. I do love action movies. Like, I'm not really into those comedy shows or anything. Like, that's not my thing. Or comedy movies like Tyler Perry or, or just... I just don't really care for those, like freaking comedy movies because I don't find them to be too funny. But we did go do that on Saturday and we went to the Cheesecake Factory for dinner. Um, on Wednesday, we went to a comedy club in Crossgates Mall and we got to see Tommy Davis. You know, remember Tommy Davis from In Living Color? Um, he was pretty funny, somewhat funny, but his opening act, the guy before him, this white guy, he was hilarious. So, I don't know. He was okay. He was, you know, I did laugh, but his opening act was much more funnier. So I did have like a really good time. I ended up going to the um, urgent care on Tuesday, I believe, or Thursday. One of those days I went to the urgent care and thank God my foot was not infected. I did have to get a prescription though, just so it wouldn't get infected. So the doctor said, let me tell you something. Urgent care is not cheap here in um, Schenectady, New York. So that was a phone call, which was really freaking stupid. I'm um, so sick and tired. I don't even know why I answered it because the first three digits start off as my number and then the last four digits are something totally different. So I should know from just the 602 and the 435 that it's like some bullshit calls because every time I get a phone call with that number, it always ends up being like some bullshit calling me about my current credit card bill. I don't even have a credit card. A debit card is not considered a credit card. Credit card is when your ass needs to be having good credit and you can buy shit and I have no money. Okay. If I ain't got no money in my account, then a bitch can't buy shit. All right. Point blank period. Now I'm so sick of those fucking phone calls. But anyway, I had like a really good time, you know, um, like I was saying, it's really expensive out here in Schenectady to use the urgent care. $175 in Arizona is like $115, $100. So, you know, not cool at all. Especially to tell me that my shit ain't infected. Like, can I get a partial refund? Because it ain't infected. So, like, can I get, like, some of that money back? When the lady told me it was $175, I was like, well, do you get anything with that? And I don't know if she thought I was being serious or not, but I, a bitch was dead serious. Like, do I get the medications that come along with that? You know, like some ointments, band-aids. I'm going to need a whole bunch of shit for 175 For five minutes of the doctor's time, you going to charge me 175 And my foot ain't even infected? Bitch, you better make sure it's infected, okay? Talk about, well, it, it, um, I can't, it, it can't be infected because, um, you know, it's closed up. It's, it's kind of like looking like it's trying to close and I can't open. No, you can open the shit. You can open the wound and fucking drain out whatever the fuck is in my foot. Here's the thing. I paid the 175, got my prescription, so I wouldn't get an infection. Didn't make any sense, but I bought it. It was only four dollars for antibiotic, but my foot is hurting like really bad again. So I'm gonna just wait till I go home and go to the urgent care because the doctors in Arizona seem like they just do a lot better work than the ones out here in Schenectady. So you know, at least give me my 120 worth, okay, or 115 worth. They 175 is not a lot. Is, is a lot to be not getting nothing else with that shit. I'm going to need, like, the doctor to follow up a few times, okay? I'm going to need some bacitration ointment, and, and I'm going to need some real shit, not no generic brand, a little plastic thing. And I'm going to need some real Band-Aids, not no generic brand. For 175 I'm going to need all that. Give me some peroxide, some alcohol pads, a bottle of peroxide. Fuck the pads, okay? Like, just give me some real shit, gauze, everything. But, yeah, ain't give me shit. But, yeah, so that's that's been about it. You know, I've just been chilling, relaxing, you know, while my husband is at work. You know, I just sit here and I edit videos and 
that's about it. So we're going to get into this real talk. You guys already know the drill. If you have a real talk that you would like to um, have broadcasted on YouTube by me, then you can go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, real talk, and definitely change the names if you would like to of the people that you were referring to or talking about or dishing the tea out or throwing shade at in the email. You can definitely tell me that you changed the name or you changed the sex of these people, meaning they were a girl, really. But you're going to change it to them being a boy. Either way, whatever makes you feel more comfortable. So, you guys, let's get into this real talk. Okay. Okay, so, guys, let's get into this first one. Hey, Auntie April, I just love your channel and the advice you give. I would be I would be completely lost without you, and I thank you so much for always keeping it real and giving tough love when needed. I have already changed the names for you. I will apologize in advance. Um, this is my son texting me. Um, I will apologize in advance. For how lengthy this is about to be, but it's a lot of background info so you can get a better picture of my relationship with my mother, Kristen. My mom had me when she was a teenager, and our relationship dynamic is more of sisters than mother and daughter. I lived with my grandparents for some time as a baby and also during high school. My mom was in a physically abusive relationship with my sperm donor, and I used to pray with my grandma that she would divorce him. She finally did when I was eight and then remarried when I was 13. This husband, we would call him Steve. Steve wasn't physically abusive, but he was emotionally and verbally abusive and a bum who refused to work. I moved in with my grandparents in high school because he was verbally attacking her and my siblings came in my room crying and I went out there and confronted him and told him I tried to stab my own father and would have no problem taking him out. Anyway, the next day she told me I was wrong and being disrespectful after trying to defend her. So I said forget it and left. I sat in hospitals with her getting stitches and shit when she was married to my sperm donor and wasn't going to go through this again. She stayed married to Steve for 20 years and finally divorced him last year. Now she's dating another bum. We will call him Dylan. Dylan has been married three other times, lives with his mom, works part-time, drives her car, allegedly sells weed, and is um, working and is allegedly in school working to his master's degree. He's emotionally and verbally abusive as well. I told her she hasn't, she has a pattern, excuse me, I told her she has a pattern and clearly she hasn't learned from her other two marriages. He is very inappropriate with his conversations with my brother, who's 14, and my 19-year-old sister, who still live in the home. Kristen seems to lose all common sense when she has a man in her life and tries to show out in front of them. It's like she doesn't have her own identity. She's allegedly moving with Dylan from what my siblings tell me, but she denied it when I asked her. It's very frustrating watching her do this crap all over again, and she's been avoiding seeing me and talking to me lately because how... Had, I've made it none, and I because I've made it non. I don't like her boyfriend. I've, oh, excuse me, she said known. I've made it known that I don't like her boyfriend, and he isn't welcome in my home. My mom is a beautiful woman, but it seems like she likes anything that likes her. Do you have any suggestions of words of wisdom I can share with Kristen? Thank you in advance for taking the time to read out. Love, sunshine, and this is my mom. So she sent me a picture of her mother. And her mom is a beautiful young lady. You know what I mean? You know, it's so sad that we as women, we just kind of like, just like she said, my mom likes whoever likes her. And it's sad when it's like that because we don't see our worth sometimes. And, you know, like beauty isn't everything. Like, you know what I'm saying? You could be pretty to the gods. And at the same time, you're really pretty to the gods. You can be like a true fucking asshole you know what I'm saying so it really doesn't have to do with looks all the time but I think like when we choose the person that we want to date we don't really see past certain things and they definitely don't show those evil intentions that they have 
or that real personality that they have once they start dating us in the very beginning. You know what I'm saying? Like I always tell you guys, it's their representative. However, you should be able to spot a bum from a far distance. It don't matter if he's not a homeless bum. It don't matter if he is living on somebody else's couch. You should be able to spot a bum from a far distance. He ain't got to be homeless for real, for real, like that to be, you know, for you to be able to spot him. Like if a nigga don't have shit, why the hell would you want to be with him? Like I'm, I'm saying, I'm not saying be a gold digger, but listen, honey, I'm all out for helping everybody and helping people. But if you ain't got but zero and I got 100, because I could have one thing and that's 100% more than your ass got, you know what I'm saying? So it just sucks that when you see a woman, that's a good woman and she's about her business, she take care of her business, she have a job, don't matter where she work at, but she has a job, and she take care of her household, and you know, her bills, and she just takes care of life responsibilities in general, then that's what you call a stable woman, who's got a decent head on her shoulder, and then it's like the prey come out, you know, the men who don't got shit, who ain't about shit, and they just want to take your shit. That's the part that just like really gets to me. And then sometimes I feel like some women are so lonely and they want a companionship that they are just like vulnerable to every fucking thing. That's like, you know, if you have an open cut, an open wound and you don't, you don't put a bandaid on it, you don't cover it up. It's vulnerable to every freaking bacteria, germ, virus, whatever, to get into that wound. And that's like sometimes with women. Some women are so lonely that they become vulnerable. And that vulnerability can just lead to all types of prey that are about to prey on your ass, meaning a homeless bum, a bum that sleep on his mama couch and ain't got shit, a bum who got his own apartment but he ain't working, he got social services taking care of him, a bum who, who, get, who got an apartment, who got nice shit but don't even have a real job, this nigga sell drugs or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Those are still considered bums to me. I, I mean, I consider a nigga that sells drugs to be a bum because if you don't want to go and get a real job, nigga, you a bum. Okay, you are a real fucking bum, especially if you're not thinking towards your future. And now her mother, Kristen, has a new bum in her life. This bum ain't got no job. He's allegedly working towards his master's degree, allegedly going to school, and allegedly sells weed, drives her mother's car, probably stays at her mother's house. I can't remember. But either way, nigga, you a bum. You a bum. He ain't going to school. I mean, like. Listen, her mother doesn't look old, but I'm pretty sure she ain't no fucking in her 20s for this young lady to be writing me. You know what I'm saying? So, let's see. She had her mom divorced when she was eight from her, her own biological father. Then she got married right after, I don't know how many years after, we'll say maybe like three years after, I think she said. And she was married to that bum. For 20 years so that's like what 28 29 30 31 so the young lady is probably in her 30s who's written me and the mother has to be at least in her late 40s very late 40s or 50s okay she doesn't look like it so now if her mother's like at least in her early 50s maybe even 60 um what did she say she had her when she was let's see I think she said she had it when she was really young. Okay. So her mom had it when she was a teenager. So, okay, so she's got to be like at least in her, her middle to late 40s. Okay. So now you're dating somebody who is probably like the same age as her mom. She didn't say that he was younger. And, um... So her mother remarried five years later when she was 13. So, okay, so her mom is like in her 40s probably. More than likely she's in her late late 40s, very early 50s. Either way, she's probably not dating anybody that's younger than her because I'm pretty sure the young lady who wrote me would have stated so. You know what I'm saying? Now, so you got somebody that is allegedly working towards their master's degree and going to school at your age, at like my age, 
Like, where are we doing this at? Nigga, you should have been done did that shit. And I'm not knocking anybody that decides to go back to school and better themselves. But if you're being verbally abusive, emotionally abusive, you allegedly sell weed, you allegedly go to school, you drive my mama's car all the time, you suffer whatever you can. Nigga, you was an old bum. Like, really. And it's sad because women these days feel like if I tell you I care about you, you don't even got to say I love you to half of these women. They just be like, yo, I care about you. I want you to be my girl. They go head over heels. Their panties be getting all moist. They go crazy. They start posting it all on social media about how they got a man and he's this and he's that. Like, girl, bye. Okay, some things you got to keep to yourself. Men see shit like that and they just know your ass is vulnerable. So, you know what I'm saying? Her mom has a pattern, it seems like, because she says that her mom likes to date men who are abusive either verbally or physical this is the pattern and they're bums all right and how do you talk to somebody about their pattern and their dating and you know especially if it's your mom like you know i mean if that was my mom i would just probably knock the man out you know what i'm saying or have him fucked up jump or whatever it is the case may be and then let my mom know you need to leave this man alone but you this is something totally different this is her mother's pattern so her mother is known for doing this and dating men like this. And the daughter basically wants her mother to just open her eyes and realize, like, you don't need to pick these typical men that like you. Just because they like you does not mean you have to like them back or even hold a conversation with them. I told y'all last week when dudes try to holler at me, I'd be like, don't even think about it. Mm, don't even think about it. I wouldn't give a damn if you were the best looking thing on the face of this earth. Please don't think about it. Because I already know. Sorry about that. I already know your mind stay dude. Okay. And on top of that, I don't even have time for this. Like, just please don't even think about it. I'm just like so untrustworthy to people or to men in general. Like, And plus I got my own. But it doesn't even matter if I didn't. I don't have time for the bullshit. But just because they find interest in you does not mean that you have to find interest in them. So how does she tell her mom, like, listen, the niggas that you've been dating are straight up bums. And it shouldn't really be so hard to talk to a person, especially your mother. But she's had her issues with her mom in her past. It's not really like a mother and daughter relationship. Her mother has put her out because she has disrespected her her mom's boyfriend just because he was being abusive to her you know which she was defending her mom and you know she told her she had to leave or she didn't even tell her she had to leave but the young lady left and how do you tell your mom that she's dating a bum you know that's your mother she's going to listen to you regardless of what and as a parent that's her duty to listen to you you should be able to talk to your mom and inform her of her bad behavior just as well as she would be able to inform you about your bad behavior or your bad habits this is your mom's bad habits picking bum ass men and this is what you need to tell her you don't have to be disrespectful and curse at her but you do need to be very open with your mom you're a young lady you're a grown ass woman yourself you have every right to inform your mother of the bullshit that she's putting herself through and your siblings through and you as well even if you don't live with her she's still putting you through it because you have to deal with it you have to hear about it and if someone was to try to hurt your mother like one of these bum ass negroes you would definitely you know be there to aid in her defense regardless of how you may feel about your mother or upset you're still going to aid in her defense so it still does affect you as well me personally, if that was my mom, you know, like I said, the first thing I probably would do is have the man fucked up. But we have to be realistic about shit. Even if I was to have his ass whooped, I still have to deal with the fact that is my mother out of this cycle, cycle pattern of bum ass men? You know? Um, is she not going? Is she not going to date these bum ass men? I have to get it through to her head that these type of men are not what is best for her. So what you need to do is you have to have a real heart to heart with your mom. And it's probably going to have to be somewhere else than where she resides at. Because I'm pretty sure the bum ass Negro is sitting on her couch, laying up in her bed, eating her motherfucking cereal and Cheetos and every fucking thing else. 
okay? So me personally, I would invite her out for lunch, okay? For lunch, for dinner, whatever time slot is available for you and your mom. I would invite her out and just let her know, Mom, I want to talk to you about a few things. Or you don't even have to tell her that in advance because sometimes we tell people that we want to talk to them about a few things. They automatically think negative and they automatically think that it's in response to themselves, which in this case, it definitely is. But, you know, we don't want to have to tell her that. So I would basically say, you know, Mom, hey, I want to take you out to lunch or dinner, you know, when are you available, when do you have free time, just me and you, you know, we, we don't really spend time together, and I really want to bond with you, so I would love to be able to take you out for something to eat, that's what you do, it's so loud over here, you know what I'm saying, and then you have your heart to heart with her, not right in as soon as you sit down to the meal, but let her order first because that way she can't get up and leave. Let her start eating and make sure that you pick her up and you take your car or whoever's car you're going to use. So that way she don't try to get up and leave. But, you know, you, you have a good conversation with her on the way to the, to the eatery. You also have, I'm going to close the window real quick, guys. Sorry about that. So I don't really know how good that is going to, me closing that window is going to, like, suffocate the, the noise but I don't want to turn the air conditioner on because I don't want you guys to hear that in the background either so whew. but I can still hear the noise but not as loud but I can hear it so anyway as I was saying you know just have a good conversation with her on the way to the eatery like tell her what you've been up to what you've been doing how life is going for her for yourself and then ask her like how, how are things with you mom you know and have a conversation let her talk don't interrupt her don't say well that's not what i heard or that ain't what my brother and sister told me don't don't come at her like that because then she's going to feel like you're being very invasive and she's not going to want to open up to you so you want to make her feel at least comfortable to the point where she can um be able to feel confident enough to speak with you and that's how you start off you know the drive there you're having a nice conversation you don't definitely want to drive and argue with her at the same time it's not healthy and it's damn sure not safe so i would definitely have like a good conversation with her and just kind of like feed off of what she's giving you so that way you'll know how to approach her when the appropriate time comes while y'all are eating you know what i'm saying allow her to choose her food okay and then once the food has been served, if you can't wait for it to be served, and I understand because some places can take forever, take it to the Cheesecake Factory. She'll love that. She'll get some dessert and shit. But, you know, and then just kind of like break the ice with her. You know, Mom, the reason why I brought you is because I wanted, I wanted to spend time with you and I wanted to have a conversation with you. But also just to let you know that you have been on my mind and the reasons why you've been on my mind. And then just let her know how you feel. Like, you know, I love you. You're my parent and you're also my friend too. But at the same time, I don't see you making healthy choices for yourself. These relationships that you're getting yourself into are toxic. The first one that I'm aware of is my father and you. And then the next one, and then the next one. And I think that you deserve better. You just, you know what I'm saying? Build her confidence up while you're talking to her. Because this is what some people need. And sometimes when it comes from us as their child, sometimes parents don't listen to us as their children because they feel like they're the parent, regardless of what age you are, they still feel like, well, I'm the parent, what the fuck do you know, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But I feel like if you are inviting and warm in your tones with her, that she'll be able to listen more and she'll be a little bit more acceptable. Because if you don't say nothing, what's gonna happen? She can continue to date these fucking bums like listen you can get somebody to scare his ass off but I guarantee you that some other bum is gonna come along and she's gonna want to date him too and that sucks that women can be so vulnerable to where they can allow any fucking sheep or wolf in a, a sheep's clothing into their home because that's what the fuck it is wolf in sheep's clothing it sucks but this is this is why I be telling y'all it's their representatives in the beginning like when you meet somebody it's always their representatives like straight up like you know like that's like when my husband first met me. He didn't know I was crazy, deranged, and shit like that. Like, I ain't crazy crazy, but I don't think he want to argue with me. And the way I get, I, I get really like, not anymore because I'm more mature. But, you know, if, if he was to see my representative, if he wasn't able to see, like, okay, basically, if I was to 
you know, approach him or we just started talking and I let him see the true April. Like, April can be a bitch. April can be um, a little crazy at times. April could just um, be moody. Then he probably wouldn't want to fuck with me. And then that's when, you know, you got to show your representative. You got to be the good April. The one with the angel wings. Not the one that's over here with the horns in her head, but the one with the angel wings. And I'm not a devil, but... You know, when we meet someone at first, we don't allow them to see our true self. That's just a given. Anybody that's a fucking true asshole is not about to let their true self come out on the first date. That's just a known fact. Because why the fuck would you want to date them again if you just seen he was a straight up asshole? Unless you that desperate and hard up for some dick and a relationship. You know what I'm saying? But that goes to say, like, anybody you meet, of course we put on a different fucking hat. And we wear that shit until the time is right. And then we take that motherfucker off, you know, and then we just be ourselves. And by then, sometimes it's too late. But let me tell you something. Nigga, if you ain't got shit, you verbally and emotionally abusive, and you a bum-ass nigga, I don't give a fuck how late in the relationship it is. It could be three years later. And this is when you start showing those characteristics. Nigga, goodbye. Nigga, goodbye. But I'll tell you what. I'll be able to spot your bum ass from a mile away. Nick, you ain't got what? You want to drive my what? You want to do what? What you would want to do is go to the shelter. I can give you a listing of the shelters in the area and some that ain't in the area. Better yet, I would rather you go to the ones that ain't in the area so I don't got to run into your fucking raggedy ass. Second of all, what you might want to do is get a job or several job applications and get yourself some employment so you can get yourself a weekly or bi-weekly check however you get paid. You know what I'm saying? And then you might want to save that up and get you a bank account and get you your own motherfucking car that you you can drive around town in and look cute not on my gas tank expense and then you may want to get yourself a place to stay as well so that way you ain't got to be sleeping on my motherfucking couch or anybody else's so nigga bye okay i think like when you are like a certain age like mine 44 years old you just be like over it you just be kind of like listen I don't have time for the shenanigans. I'm not about to be part of the shenanigan bullshit. And on top of that, I can spot a fucking liar and somebody that's full of shit a mile away. I'm not about to put up with your bullshit. And I'm damn sure not going to sit here and let you feed me the okie doke. That's one thing I'm not about to do. And it just says a lot when women just don't really understand that a lot of these men are out here for no good. Like, they, they don't give a fuck. They could care less. And it's women, too, that do the same fuck shit as well. But the main thing to me would be if you were to have a real heart-to-heart -heart with her. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, don't be so aggressive. Don't be aggressive in the beginning because that's your mom. And some people, they're not, they're just not built that way where you can be aggressive to them. And some people do need the tough love. But I think those people that need like the tough love are the ones who basically you have told them over and over and over and over and over again, you know, about their bad habits about their bad lifestyle, about their bad choices. You know, those are the type of people that you have to give tough love to because you've already given soft love on numerous occasions and it doesn't work out for them. Now, I'm not really sure how your mom and you have, you know, conversed or, you know, been able to communicate with each other in the past, but just break the ice a little bit and let her know. Because if that's a pattern for her, because it seems like it to me, then nine times out of ten, she's going to get rid of this bum, and then the next bum going to come along. I get it. We we as people, not even women, but we as people, nobody wants to be alone. But sometimes being alone will bring you such great stability and wisdom that you will realize the fake and the real when it comes, and it comes to play right in front of your face. You know what I'm saying? Like, with me... Me and my husband, we, well, I divorced him because he didn't want to divorce me. But, you know, and because I was lonely, and I wasn't even lonely, but I was, but I wasn't, you know, I got with somebody who was a real dickhead. Like, seriously, a dick fucking head. I mean, I can go on and on about his worthless fucking gay fucking ass, um, secretly gay ass and whatever else. But, you know what I'm saying? Back in jail ass, whatever, you know what I mean? But... 
because I was lonely and probably vulnerable, yes, I will admit to it that I was because um, I was. If I wasn't, then I wouldn't have got with his dumb ass and I wouldn't allow him to feed me okie doke stories and dumb shit like that. So that's when the vulnerability comes into phase. Like, we know that we don't want to be alone. Who wants to be alone? You know what I'm saying? Who wants to be alone? Nobody wants to be alone. You know, but sometimes when we're too alone, we get, you know, sidetracked and we become an open wound. And then when the first nigga or man tries to holler at us, we kind of fall head over. And we have to learn, realize that being alone is not a bad thing. Sometimes you need that alone time, regardless if it's a few months, it's a few years. Like for me, I'm good with that because I'm able to, you know, be able to learn myself you know what i'm saying i have learned a lot about myself as a person like you know what things that i can tolerate and what things i don't tolerate and then there's a lot of things that that i used to would not tolerate that i could just tolerate now you know why because i'm easy to just walk away from some shit now not saying that i'm a punk or nothing but also it just says about me like you know what i'm too grown for this shit is that what you want to fucking do then go ahead but bitch as long as you don't put your hands on me we good but if you want to call me a bitch or whatever that's cool you can run your mouth all day but i guarantee you bitch you will not put your hands on me because if you was going to you would have stopped running your motherfucking mouth and would have done that already so for people like that like certain situations I'm able to just walk away from it you know what I'm saying because I've learned to grow and I've learned myself and I've been able to be alone and I have been able to just kind of like reevaluate who April is and also there's shit that I'm just not going to tolerate in a relationship at all and then there's shit that I have to realize like what you did in a relationship April wasn't that great neither like so you didn't really help your marriage that great either not saying that it was my fault and not saying that it was all my husband's fault but you know we both played a part in it but being alone allowed me to realize like the type of person i am and it just learned me it just allowed me to love myself too and i like being alone sometimes you know when i go home i'm really not alone but in a perspective of i am alone because i don't have my husband there with me you know i talk to him every day and stuff but I do appreciate that time by myself because it gives you time to think so sometimes people don't have that time to think especially if they're just allowing relationship after relationship and if she has time to think then she wouldn't be with no bum ass Negroes point blank period so yes give our dear sweetheart and um, some advice on her mother Kristen why does my face look fatter like I don't even know how much weight I've gained since I've been here but um it does look fatter and I have been doing squats and then I haven't been doing them like because you know my leg has been hurting my knees are bad right now um but anyway I feel like my butt is getting smaller it's not the way I want it to look so I have been talking to my husband about BBL I don't want a bigger butt because it's big enough but I want it to be more rounded you know what I'm saying mainly I want them to take the stomach fat and put it somewhere just put it anywhere and my ass and my titties, you know, I would really like it for my tits and my ass. If you could put it in both places, kudos to you. So we're going to move on to the next one. And this, this, this real talk is kind of, it's not hard, but it is hard. Um, so I'm going to try to give the best advice that I can because, um, it's just kind of hard. Especially because it's a young child. You know what I'm saying? Let me see. Okay. So first of all, they emailed me to ask me, was I still taking requests um, for a real talk, you know? And I was like, of course. And they asked me, was there like an age limit? No, there isn't, you know, because everybody needs help. It could be a 15 year old who watched me because they love my wig videos. And then they have something that they want to tell their mother, but they really don't know how to go about it. And as a mother, you know, you can definitely come and talk to me. I've been through a lot of things. So, you know, I'm not going to tell no teenager to go and beat somebody up. I, I wouldn't tell anybody to go beat somebody up, but you know. So anyway, so here we go. Okay, well, let's start. That's what they said. My name I'm using for this will be easy. I am 16 years of age who lives in Florida. 
Orlando, Florida. I am moving on forward to the 11th grade, but there's a couple of things from my past that have left a big scar on my life, and I'm afraid of what may happen for this school year and the rest of the years to come. I have been physically abused, emotionally abused all of my life. I've had an officer point a loaded shotgun at me, telling me to control my breathing, having me scared thinking I was going to be killed if I didn't breathe normally. People tend to think I'm gay since I wear lace frontals. So many people look at me and laugh at me, and they never stop. But some people are, all, are accepting, and some people think I'm still attractive and still cute and all that good stuff. But the problem is, again, the other people who hate, who bully, who taunt me for being different, and who always say to me, I look like Michael Jackson. And I don't think that I do, but they get it from, I guess, my hairstyle or the way my face is structured. When I was a kid, I was threatened by my own father to tell him my sexuality or he would bash my head through the car windshield. I was beaten with a broomstick by my abusive uncle. I cut myself with a kitchen knife because of all of the bullying. All these things are affecting me. These things I cannot get over. These things left a big scar on my life for me to fear and hide. And I don't want my life to be like this, but this is something that's going to last a lifetime. And with the kids now, they make it worse. I have so much love in my heart, so much forgiveness. I am a very humble person and soft-spoken, but all that can change instantly if the bad continues to happen. And I don't want that to happen. The one thing that makes me happy is dancing, singing, rapping, songwriting. Those things are my God-given talents. And I'm trying to make my name, something I'm trying to get my name known and make history to tell people that it's okay to be different. I'm not gay. I'm not a wannabe. I'm not none of these things they portray me as. But it gets to me deeply in my heart. And they don't think about what they say or do to me. They don't know how bad it affects me. I really need the help, the advice to get me out of the state of being scared and feared. I know half this stuff may be mixed up and kind of confusing, but I broke it down because I could go through from beginning to end and go from there, but that would have been really, really long. So I broke it down to where it's easy enough to get a clue or idea of what's going on. All love, sincerely, easy. So basically, easy, and I do believe easy is a boy, um, is not gay, but he is going into the 11th grade. He or she is going into 11th grade. I'm not really sure if it's a girl or a boy. Um, I'm thinking that it might be a girl because they like to wear lace, lace frontals. Um, but I'm not really sure, but it doesn't even matter. The whole fact is that Easy is being bullied, okay? From the way that they look, probably maybe the way that they dress, the way that they wear their hair, or their face structure. So I'm thinking that she may be a girl. I'm not really sure, but Easy has been physically abused by family members and just verbally and emotionally abused by family members and kids. And you know something? Easy is right. The kids these days have no respect. You know, the, the kids these days can easily go and pick up a goddamn cell phone and record from their cell phone someone getting beat up like and it could be so bad as to where you're seeing an elderly person or an older person getting beat up beat up by a bunch of other teenagers they'll have no remorse they'll stand there with their goddamn phones and record every fucking thing with no remorse they don't think about if it was one of their family members if it was them they don't think about it and you, you know what easy's right the kids these days the teenagers these days the kids in general they have no fucking respect for life in general I'm not even gonna say for their elder for their older they don't have respect for themselves they don't have respect for life they don't have respect in general and I'm not gonna say all of them are like that but enough of them are like that you know what I'm saying enough of them are like that's the point where you have to wonder like okay I see a bunch of teenagers on this side of the street. I'm going to just cross the fuck over because I would not want to walk past them and they say something or do something to me. This is how, in this day and age, we as people have to think about these these teenagers. They go around, they play these stupid ass games called knockout where they just run up on any random individual and punch them to where they're laid out on the floor. Like, who does that? 
this is what I'm, society today, the youth today are like really like, you, you think and you like, well, damn, are they going to be the ones that run the world in the futures to come? Because we're doomed. Like seriously, the music be a little bit too much for me. Like I'm, I'm, I know I'm 44 years old and yeah, I probably, I, and I feel like my mom, like, because I remember as a teenager, I would go, oh, you don't like nothing. I don't like her music. She don't like our music. Oh, he's complaining. You know, but my rap music from when I was a kid, like Salt and Pepper and stuff was nothing compared to what they talk about today. Nothing that be the, the rap music or the music, just not even the rap music, but the music. Okay. And be the clothing. It be the social media, the phones. It's a lot of shit. And like, I'm not saying that all teens are like this, young people, youth, but it's enough of them to where they could really like fuck up the world. You know what I'm saying? And Easy's right. Like, these kids today, they taunt you. They make fun of you just for clout. You know what I'm saying? They do shit just for clout. You know what I'm saying? Like, record shit just for clout. A lot of these kids are um, fucking clout chasers or just shit in general you know what i'm saying they have no respect for anything and i can understand where easy talks about you know being bullied now my situation is probably kind of the same but we have to remember that was so long ago when i was in high school you know what i'm saying but i remember I used to be bullied so much and just made fun of and not even bullied like to where you would make me do shit, but I would just be made fun of a lot. And it would be like the boys, not a lot of the girls, but the boys would say mean things like, you know, my mom really wasn't the best at doing hair. So she would put my hair in like about 20 ponytails with little goodie rubber bands at the end. She would braid them up, you know, put them braids in them and put little colorful rubber bands on the end. But I'd have like 20 of them in my head. And she didn't have to do with my hair every day, but my mom wasn't the best at doing hair. So I would be called Medusa. You know, look at Medusa with the snakes in her hair. And freckle face, pissy yellow. Oh, you bring some freckle juice today. Or, um, you know, my mom, she really couldn't afford the name brand stuff, but I was happy that I had shoes, okay? So my Adidas, they had four stripes. So what? You know, they were called balloons. And they would make fun of me saying how I was going to float away with my balloon sneakers on, shit like that. And it would really, really get to me and really, really bother me. But, you know, I just kept on trucking. I just kept on, you know, moving on. I, yeah, I would hate it, you know. I definitely would hate it. And I guess after so long... When I was like in my 11th, 10th or 11th year in high school, I had had enough, had enough. I definitely had enough, you know, wasn't nobody going to make fun of me anymore. Wasn't nobody going to say no fucking smart shit to me. You know what I'm saying? Wasn't nobody going to do none of that shit to me. I wasn't having it, but it does get to you after a while and you do feel like the world is on your shoulder and you do end up like snapping off on people and that's what ended up happening to me you know girl threw a fucking spitball at me from the back of the fucking classroom and at that moment in time i was done there was no way on god's green earth was i going to take anybody else's shit any fucking more so i kind of probably became the bitch you know and I just, it wasn't that I started acting up, but I wouldn't take nobody's shit anymore. So, you know, it's hard. Bullying is a very hard thing to go through, you know, and this is like what I tell my daughter, Mumsy, because, you know, Mumsy is, she'll be 11 next month in August, August the 16th. And she's a little bit chubbier. She's bigger than most 10-year-olds or 11-year-olds. Not only is she bigger, but she's way taller than them, okay? So me and Mumsy are the same height. Mumsy's 5'3". I'm 5'3", okay? And she's only 10. And she's been this height for a minute now. So she is not going to be anybody small. And then, like, you know, I would worry about her as to somebody saying anything about your size. Not your height, but just your size, your weight. You know, is anybody saying anything about your weight? Um, or, you know what I'm saying? Is 
anybody making fun of you. And she would always tell me no because nobody ever did. But I would always let her know, like, don't be afraid to, you know, basically come and tell me because if somebody is talking about you, look, we're going to handle this. We definitely going to handle this. And this is me talking because I don't, I don't, I don't do well with the bully shit. Like, I'm not about to let you bully any of my children. Like, no, that's not about to happen. But it is a very hard thing, especially if you just go into school and you don't want anybody to bother you. You know, you just want to go to school and learn. But it becomes hard when you have multiple people picking on you, talking about your clothing, your shoes, your hair, your face, your, your bone structure. That shit is hard. And yeah, after a while, you will definitely flip the fuck out. Like, you know, I got tired of it and I started flipping out. And then ever since then, I became a lot more angrier not even angrier but i just will not tolerate bullshit and like like i said i've gotten older and i've learned to tolerate some things but bullying i am not about to tolerate i am definitely not about to tolerate that shit okay and it sucks because as long as you allow them to bully you they're going to continue to do this they pick on the people that are weaker prey than them so at least i think that's what they do you know what i'm saying that's how i portray a bully picking on someone that they feel they can beat up if the person was to say something. And that's not the case. Like, you can never fucking judge a book by its cover. You may think that you could beat me up because I ain't saying nothing to you. Maybe I don't say nothing to you because you're not worth my time. But in the end, you have to realize, these bullies need to realize that their day is going to come also. As a bully, your day is definitely going to come, you know. And this bullying shit should just be stopped, nipped in the bud. And there are so many different organizations that you can go to, but it's unfortunate that Easy cannot go to their family members because look how their family members are treating them. They got the father bashing your head in or threatening to bash your head in. You got the uncle beating you with a broomstick. Like, come on. This is where a lot of it stems from was at home. You know what I'm saying? All of the bullying at home and then you had to go to school and be bullied. You know, me personally... If it was me easy and you know that you don't have anyone to talk to, you don't have at home or friends, a school friends. And if you do have like one really good friend, you know what? I would talk to them and I would go and I would talk to their parents and let them know what you've been going through. Because maybe they can point out some places that are accessible to you to be able to join and go and be able to speak. But also I would go to like my counselor and let them know like this is what is affecting me. This is what is affecting me. And this is how I've been trying to deal with it. And a lot of times people don't realize, but being bullied is like very like an emotional thing and you do get scarred you can be scarred like i'm not saying none of the shit that people have done and said to me as me as a teen as a kid growing up until a grown woman has scarred me because you know something i look at them and i laugh at them because they still sitting on the project benches when i come through and i see my mom y'all still sitting there but y'all are the ones that call me light skin medusa oh uh, you know all kind of names but here it is i've moved away far away and y'all still sitting here drinking and smoking weed on the benches you fucking bums you know what i'm saying these are what i call motherfucking bums okay but i didn't let it scar me but maybe it has, and I just don't know that because I felt like from that day on with the fucking spitballs that you will never disrespect me again in life. And from that, I have, you know, manifested into like not the best person in the world, but I have my moments where you really don't want to fuck with me and you really don't want to argue with me because I'm the last person on the face of the earth you would want to get in an argument with. Because, for one, I could be your bestest friend and I could love you so close. But then if you try to fucking disrespect, then I'm just going to go off on you like you would never believe. And it would probably be hurtful to you because, damn, she was my close friend and then she just took it to that level. That's how I be. So I don't think you would want to freaking argue with me. And that's probably from stemming from being picked on. Like nobody wants to be picked on. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to be picked on. And it's sad because like I told you guys, stop judging people from the way that they look or the way that they dress or their hair. That's not right. Because just because you don't like it, bitch, what make you think that I don't like it? I don't give a fuck. And sometimes easy, these people that are picking at you and saying these hurtful things, 
you know what it is hurtful and sometimes it is really hard to ignore but sometimes you have to try your best to ignore them and you have to realize that these people are more cowards than you can only imagine they are cowards when you can pick on somebody and when you can bully somebody that means you are a fucking scumbag coward that's how i feel i don't give a fuck how old you are if you pick on somebody if you want to pick on somebody you are a fucking low life coward that's how i feel about it that's what i know that's how i look at it you know what i'm saying you can go around and make fun of people and poke fun at them and record them and pick them and just do all kind of bully things then you are the coward and you are the low life don't see none of those people that are picking at you going around to anybody else at school talking shit to them you know what i'm saying you don't see that that's because they're cowards and sometimes with those type of people you have to let, just brush them off because they're not worth your time they definitely not worth your time. If you have dreams and ambitions, you know what I'm saying, aspirations, and you want to you want to do things in life, then you do that shit. Don't let none of these fucking low life kids discourage you or stop you from doing what you want to do. Cuz I guarantee you the ones that are bullying probably ain't that fucking intelligent. Those are the ones that you're going to see packing your burgers when you go to McDonald's or some shit to get you a quick bite when, you know what I'm saying, you on your way home from your real motherfucking job. Those are the ones that you're going to see there. They're not worth your time. And it's sad, but they're really, it's sad to say that somebody is not worth your time, but it's so true. They're not worth your time. And they're definitely not worth you coming out of character for. You know what I'm saying? Never stoop to somebody else's low level, like on some real shit, because as low as they may look to you, for you to just come out of character and just do the things that they do, or just to spew back at them, it's just stooping to their low character. But then I do understand that there are times when, you know what, I can't take no more, so I'm about to read you real quick. That's what you have to do sometimes, but then it's the best time is just to ignore the fact that we got ourselves a group of assholes over here who are probably not going to be about much. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, people like that, you can really kill them with just your sarcasm and your intelligence. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to tell them that they're stupid. You don't have to tell them that they are low life and that they ain't going to amount to shit. All you got to do is be like, oh, I might look like Michael Jackson, but at least he had money. What you going to have in the near future? I'm doing things. People don't like when you fuck with their intelligence and their stability. People don't like that. Not even teenagers. Teenagers don't like to hear that shit because they think they know every fucking thing. That's the problem. Teenagers think that they know every motherfucking thing. And they don't. Because if you knew every fucking thing, you would definitely know that bullying is not right. But what I would do is, the main thing I would do is, I would if you have a close friend, I would definitely talk to my close friend and ask if you can talk to their parent. And also, I would go to my school counselor. Sometimes people would be like, well, that's just telling on people it's a snitch. Oh, well. You're not a snitch for telling on people. If, if you want to do some type of fucking malicious shit to people, then you have every right to be told on. Straight up. If you like going around bullying people, then you need to be fucking told on. People don't like bullies. The only people that like bullies is other bullies. And some bullies don't even like bullies because they know that they ass can get fucking bullied. You know what I'm saying? I would definitely talk to my counselor. And I would, if you have a good friend, I would definitely talk to them. But what about your mom? You know what I'm saying? What about your mom? Do you tell your mom these problems or is she one that you can't speak with? And if you can't, then I get it. But I'm pretty sure that you have somebody in your family that you can talk with or someone outside of your family. And that's what I would like to see for you. But I would also like for you to not allow these people, because that's all they are, are people, to get you in a state of depression or anger. You know why? Because their main goal a bully's main goal is to upset you and to hurt your feelings. You know what I'm saying? That is their number one goal. As long as you allow them to do that, they know they have achieved that and they will continuously do it, sweetheart. So we're not going to allow them to get the best of us. That's not what we're going to allow them to do. You know what I'm saying? It's hard, but you got to fight through it. So, you guys, on that note, I'm going to end this. I hope you guys enjoyed this real talk. Um, by the time you see this, I will be back at home. If you have any advice for easy, please leave it below. Stay deep and deep delicious, and I'll see you guys on another note. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe too.